Hello everybody, welcome back to WTF Homestead. I'm Jenny. Today I'm gonna to be making some biscotti. Um, anybody that's been around here any length of time knows how much I love coffee and what goes better with coffee than biscotti. I used to make biscotti actually quite a bit um, years ago. I haven't made it in a very, very long time and I've been kind of craving it here lately. So I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna make some. So I had to do a, a, a little more uh, looking into some recipes and stuff. And again, this is another one that I've kind of, I've kind of created my own recipe because, because I do. So I'm terrible about measurements and stuff like that, but I'm gonna try my best on all the recipes that I share. I'm trying my best to uh, measure things so that I can tell you guys exactly what I do. And if it messes up, then I can tell you, hey, I did this, so, you know, don't do that. But uh, today I'm going to do a, um, well, there, there's several out there for just like chocolate chip, uh, things like that. I thought I had some toffee, so I wanted to do some toffee ones, and then I got in there and couldn't find my toffee. But I have a bunch of these um, chocolate-covered espresso beans. And so, look, one of them melted right in the front of it. Um, I'm gonna use those. I mean, coffee and espresso biscotti, what would be better than that, right? And chocolate. So, uh, these are super, super easy. Um, for anybody that doesn't know what a biscotti is, it's it's basically a cookie, um, but it's a very crunchy cookie, and you want it to hold up when you dunk it in your coffee. So, you want it to have a little bit of crunch to it, but not so much that it hurts your teeth, you know, or anything like that. And you want it to be able to stand up to dunk and get in your coffee. So um, anyway, and I found this out when I was researching. I never knew this, but biscotti in Italian means twice baked. And this is basically a cookie that you bake two times. So I thought that was kind of interesting. I never knew that. I've made it all these years and eaten it all these years. I never knew that's what that meant. So anyway, just a little tidbit of information there for you. Um, so th this is, like I said, super easy. Um, there are, like I said, a few recipes out there that have different uh, ways they do this. I'm kind of creating my own. So I'm going to start with mixing my wet ingredients, um, which is three eggs. And I'm going to do those first, and I'll show you why here in just a minute. I'm just going to dump them here in my bowl. My neighbor over here that we get eggs from has not had too many eggs lately. Actually, we haven't asked in a, in a little while. Um, I know they were running low the last time that we asked them since it's winter time. So I bought my last couple from the store and the shells are so thin. They, they, they're terrible. They're always breaking in my, in my stuff. So I've gotten to where I do that first so that I make sure I can get all my eggshells out. I'm just gonna mix this up just a little bit. going to let me grab a spoon right quick I've got my bowl here that my eggs were in I'm just gonna take a little bit of this out just just a very little bit maybe easier said than done I think I just want a tiny little bit there may be like a half a tablespoon in here maybe a tablespoon maybe right at a tablespoon just a little bit in there um, and I'm gonna, I need a little bit for an egg wash on the top and I didn't wanna crack a separate egg just to do that little bit of egg wash. So I'm just gonna pull a little bit out of here. Hopefully that won't make too much difference. There were uh, several recipes that only called for two eggs. So I don't think that's gonna make that much difference. Okay, so I have just my eggs and then I have a half a cup of oil and I will link uh, or I will put in the description box uh, the recipe that I'm using. Now, um, this is one of the things that I have kind of gone off on my own. There are recipes that call for only butter, and there are recipes that call for a vegetable oil type thing. Um, I am actually going to do a mix. So some of the reviews that I read said that the consistency held up better, and this it, it kind of struck me because like I said, I used to make biscotti a lot, and I would have trouble with them crumbling. 
and um, I don't like that. I don't want, you know, I like to dunk it in my coffee. I like that taste of the coffee kind of soaking into it, but I don't like it when it drops down into the bottom of my coffee. I don't like that soggy stuff in the bottom of my coffee cup. Um, but I just, you know, kind of thought that was part of it. Although whenever I buy biscotti at the store, they don't do that. So, you know, I knew there was something in there that was. So um, one lady, don't remember who it was, um, it said that vegetable oil, oil seems to help that consistency a little bit better. So I thought, well, okay. However, I, I don't like using vegetable oil. As a matter of fact, this is the last of the vegetable oil. I bought some around Thanksgiving time uh, because I was doing a ton of baking. And so I had it in the house. I don't ever use it. I mean, we use coconut oil, olive oil, avocado oil, things like that all the time. I, I rarely ever buy vegetable oil. And so this is all I had left. So I had about a quarter of a cup, maybe a little bit more, and I filled it in the rest of the way with butter. So mine is about a 50-50 ratio. I like that flavor of the butter, so I'm not really sure what this is gonna do, but we're gonna see. I mean, the biscottis that I made in the past, they were awesome. I just learned, you know, that I, it had to be a quick dip. It wasn't anything that I could just set my biscotti in my uh, coffee cup and just leave it for a few seconds. It was just a quick dip and, and that was it. So um, hopefully this will, this will work out. So that is right a half a cup of oil. And then I'm going to add in a teaspoon of vanilla. And I like vanilla, so I'm actually going to do probably a teaspoon and a half. Um, I just like the vanilla flavor. So I want to do some that's almond, but I was I'm out of my almond extract, so I need to get some of that. So I thought, well, I'll just stick with the vanilla, but just do a little bit heavier vanilla. Um, and then I'm also gonna go ahead and add my sugar, and it's one cup of sugar. And this is just, um, this is my organic sugar. Actually, no, this is just the stuff that I get from the grocery store. So it's, um, it's not organic, it's just a non-GMO unbleached or whatever that what is that all natural whatever so it's kind of got that brown tint to it I'm just gonna mix it up and I'm going to add my um, if you were gonna add your any fruit nuts anything like that you would want to do it now um, I'm gonna go ahead and do it in, in this part too with these I was kind of worried about it because I don't want these to melt too much and mix it in. I want them to just kind of be incorporated in there. But um, it's easier to do it now than it is when the dough is, is kind of stiff. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this now. So I'm gonna do a half a cup of these. And these are a tri-colored mix. Let's see if I can get an up close picture of this for you guys. Aren't those yummy looking? Mm, they're so, so good. So I'm gonna do about a half a cup of those. And then I'm going to do about a half a cup of just some, these are milk chocolate. Just Walmart brand. And they're not the minis. These are just the regular, the regular size. And you know what? I have just a tiny bit of stumble. So that's probably, that's probably about three quarters of a cup. There's not much left. You can't have too much chocolate, right? So I'm just gonna mix that in there. Now I'm just gonna mix in my dry ingredients. So I'm gonna do two cups of flour. This is just all purpose flour. teaspoon of baking powder and a teaspoon of salt give it a mix oh and you know make a mess at the same time it's a good thing I'm about to fly on my countertop here I'm gonna mix this right quick and use a get my spoon here 
it makes a very sticky dough. I'm going to add just a little bit more. I want it just a tiny bit more, a little thicker than that, just so that I can handle it a little better. flour my surface here just a little bit just so that it doesn't stick and now I forgot to mention I have my oven set on 325 it's been heating up and I have my baking pan here with a piece of parchment paper on it set it near the side I'm gonna dump this out here on the cabinet don't really want to incorporate a lot of, of flour to this. You, it is going to be a sticky dough. I just want it to where I can kind of move it around and shape it just a little bit. So I'm going to take this and just kind of cut my dough in half. And I'm going to take half of it and kind of make like a log out of it. And I'm going to get my baking pan here and I'm just going to set it on my pan and kind of make a little put this in the middle here. I'm just going to get two baking pans instead of one. Okay, and then once you get it into a shape kind of like that, roughly, you know, a little bit shorter than the size of your pan here, and then I'm just going to kind of pat it down. So you want it to be kind of a, kind of a flat cookie. And it's probably about Oh, maybe maybe a half an inch thick. Bring it up here for you to see. I was gonna put two on one uh, pan, but I'm gonna get my other pan out. Hold on, just one second. Same thing with this one. Just pat it out. Okay, I'm going to put these in the oven for about 25 minutes um, and then we're going to take it out and let it cool about 10 minutes and from there I will bring you back. We're going to have to bake them one more time after that. So I will see you guys back here in just a few minutes. Oven. And actually they've been out for oh about 10 minutes. Um, so when the timer went off I just pulled them out, set them out to let them cool. You want them to still be kind of warm, but um, you want to be able to handle them a little bit because we need to cut them. So I've just had them sitting over there. So it's been about 10 minutes. So I'm just going to take this off and put it on my cutting board. And we're just going to use a knife. And I'm actually, I got a serrated knife. Um, there were some people that said to just use a regular knife and chop through them. So we'll see, you know, how, how they go. And you can cut them either straight or at a at a diagonal. I'm going to cut them straight this time. Um, 
I actually think I like them better on a diagonal, but so we're just gonna cut them maybe about, I don't know, what is that? Three quarters of an inch, maybe? We're gonna cut them about like that. And yeah, it is easier to just, just slice them. And these smell, oh my goodness, they smell so good. And now, um, you could eat these right now. There's nothing wrong with them. So when you when you check them, when you pull them out of the oven at 25 minutes, they're just lightly golden brown on top. And when you touch the top of them, you want it to spring back. So that's that's really all you want. There is absolutely nothing wrong with them at this point. You can you can completely eat them, no problem. Um, but the, the to make them crispier, where they'll hold up in the coffee, um, they will. Uh, they need the, the second bake and also at this point you can eat them But they just be like a regular cookie that you need to eat um, You know relatively quickly within you know a week or so But after you bake them the second time they're a little more preserved They're a little uh, drier and they will actually last for several weeks in just a in just a cookie uh, container so uh, Just so you know, there's nothing wrong with with eating them right now so when we put these on here we're gonna stand them up. We're gonna lay them on their sides. I'll show you, I'll get it a little bit closer so you can see. I want you to see what these look like. Does those look good? Grab the other one. And we're going to do the same thing with this one. And you know what? I'm standing here cutting these <clears throat> and I just looked up. There's my egg wash. I was supposed to do the egg wash on top of these before I baked them and I completely forgot it. All it's going to do is um, kind of seal them off a little bit and of course make them shiny on the top. But I don't think these look bad at all, but I completely forgot about that. So let's get these on the tray or on the cookie sheet. Broke a piece. Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So good. Okay. Let me show you what these look like. Don't those look yummy? So I've left my oven on, it's still on the 325. I'm just gonna put them back in there just like this for about another 15 to 20 minutes. You basically just want them to start getting um, golden brown on the top. So um, that, that's all we're gonna do to them at this point. So we will be back in about 15 minutes. 15, 20 minutes. Okay, you guys, look, these are done. They look so good. They're just lightly toasted on the tops. They're still a little warm, so um, they will, and they're, they're a little softer when they're hot, so as they cool off, they will get a little crunchier but who can wait, right? I mean, they're hot right out of the oven. Just, oh, so, so good. The smell is just incredible. So I figured we'd taste this together. So of course, can't do it without your coffee. And I broke one over here, so I'm gonna try one of these that's broken. 
We're gonna give it the dip test here. And my coffee's hot, so I'm liable to burn myself here. Mm, mm -mm. Mm. So good. <laughs> that was a great big um, espresso bean, so that flavor was absolutely incredible. Guys, these are just, they are so super easy to make. And this recipe is really just kind of a, um, it, it's really a base. So one of my favorites is um, the uh, cranberry and orange. <clears throat> I love that. It's just, it's so, so good. Um, and I'll add a little bit of almond flavoring instead of the vanilla, but I've done the vanilla too, and it's just as good. Um, I didn't have all the stuff for that one. And then of course, just the almond biscotti is just oh, so, so good. So, I mean, this is something that, They'll keep for a while, <clears throat> just put them in an airtight container, you know, leave them on your cabinet or, or whatever, and they'll last for, uh, seriously, I, I'll bet, well, <laughs> if you can leave them alone, they will last a while, I'll put it that way. I've given these as gifts uh, years ago, and they make beautiful gift baskets, so, um, and for ingredients, they're relatively expensive. I mean, you could make these just plain with, with nothing in them. Um, and then you can sprinkle like some coarse sugar or something over the top to just to make them prettier, a little bit sweeter, um, things like that. But they're just, these are just so, so good. So you guys give them a try. Of course, give your coffee a try. Um, these always make me a little, uh, I, I get in these moods where I'm really missing my kids and you know, I talk about my love of coffee. Well, it has been passed down from generation to generation. This is, when, when we go to my mother's house, you know, we sit around the table with a Scrabble board and a cup of coffee. I mean, this coffee is just, it is ingrained in us. And I did the same thing with my kids. All of my coffee, my kids are coffee drinkers and their kids are coffee drinkers. And I mean, that I started them when they were babies, seriously. I'm one of those really horrible bad parents and they had a little bit of coffee in their bottles even. I mean, we have just always had coffee. And it, it's when we get together for any event or, you know, just, just a, a get together, anything, there's always a coffee pot, always. And you know, that, that's usually, you know, where a lot of people will say, you know, who's bringing this or who's bringing that? It's like, okay, what kind of creamer do you like? You know, or whatever. and and. Uh, the kids will bring over a new coffee bean that they've that they've tried and stuff like that and we gift coffee cups to each other this was a gift from my mother actually just the other day um our, our like i said our love of coffee comes from our mother my, my brother and my sister are the same way and uh we lost my sister um a few years ago and she was a fan of polka dots everything she had was polka dots and uh, so my mother sent me a coffee mug uh, the other day and polka dots in, in honor of Marlo. So, um, you know, I get, I get in these moods where I'm really missing my kids and stuff like that. And coffee is just one of those uh, things that kind of, it kind of cheers me up. So, you know, I can sit with my cup of coffee and think of my kids and my grandkids and my sister. And uh, now I can have a, a, a cup of, or a piece of biscotti to go with it. And, and it's, it's just great. It's just one of those things that this is just... A, a feeling for me that that um, is just it's it's peaceful and relaxing and and everything and and uh, just all the good things so um, there's a there is also a YouTube channel for any of you that like it that I, we I love jazz music and the oldies and and stuff like that I mean you put some Dean Martin on and I'll just oh, I love it and uh, there is a, a YouTube channel that's called uh, I think it's called Coffee Shop Vibes. I'll find it and I'll link it in the description down below. I can turn that music on. It's just like piano jazz and stuff like that. And oh, it's it, that, a cup of coffee, now a warm biscotti. And that's that's just the perfect day for me. So anyway, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you uh, enjoy the biscotti. If you try it, let me know. Um, to my kids, my mother, my brother, everybody. I love you guys. I miss you guys. Y'all have an awesome day, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Mmm, 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 mmm. It's so good. It's so good, babies. Mmm, 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 mmm.